you've had a lot of questions. Can I still see? How are your eyes doing? Has your full vision returned? What's the dryness like? How much did it cost? And all of these questions I am going to be answering in today's video where I'm basically going to be reviewing my own eyeballs six months after I got Smart Surface PRK laser eye surgery. Let's start with the basics. Where did I go? There's not a ton of options in Vancouver as far as I know. The one that I ended up going with was Pacific Laser Eye Center and this is because there were three different things that happened that led me to making this decision. First of all, the clinic by itself has great reviews which is always nice to see and not just reviews on their Google business but also other online resources like Reddit where people are you know, they speak their mind and they're gonna let you know how they really feel about something. And the other thing that had happened is that over the course of, you know, a couple years, I had gone to see two different optometrists and when I expressed to them that I was interested in getting laser eye surgery, they both recommended Pacific Laser Eye Center. So any one of those things, I might not be super sure if I wanted to go to that one clinic or if there was maybe a bias there. All of these independent resources point me towards the same clinic, gave me a lot more confidence. Now let's talk about what my eyes were like before I got the surgery. So I had a pretty close prescription in both eyes. I had negative 3.75 in one eye with I think a 0.25 astigmatism and then a negative 3.5 in the other eye. And my prescription had been stable for quite a number of years. I think it's as long as your eyes are stable for like five years or something, then you're in a good place to get laser eye surgery. So you kind of want to wait until your prescription is stable so that you can go in with your prescription and get it fixed. Because if you go in and your eyes are still changing, they're gonna fix it. But if your eyes continue changing, then what's the point? You're so while my eyes were changing, my optometrist recommended that I wait until my eyesight was more stable. And even though that was so frustrating because it's like a 19, 20 year old, I really wanted to get my eyes done and never wear glasses again. Ultimately, I just had to be patient until my eyes chilled out. So now we're gonna jump into some questions around recovery time and how long it took for my vision to come back, how long until I could go back to work, that kind of thing. So the first question is how long until my full vision returned? I wish I had kept notes because I don't exactly remember, but here's what I do remember. By day four, I had vision that was good enough for driving. I think by day six, I had technically 2020, but my eyes did continue to improve up to and past the two week mark of my last recovery vlog. At the two week mark when I stopped filming the part two recovery vlog, my eyes still weren't perfect. I want to say my full vision came back as much as I could notice, probably between week two and three, maybe four. But I want to stress that by the two week mark, I was fully functional. I could go out, I could get coffee, I could take my dog to the park, but I was what I would call like a fully operating human like I, I could still go and do all the things that I wanted to do that I couldn't do before that like before that in my recovery vlog I would talk a lot about how I didn't really want to leave the house because I couldn't see like I didn't have any depth perception and I couldn't really see things or see people and it made social situations really awkward and I tripped a couple times which is unpleasant especially when you are tripping and then you also can't see like that is a terrifying experience so by the two week mark I could confidently leave my house walk down the sidewalk which is a luxury I did not know that I even had and I really appreciate that I have it back so would I say I have my full vision now 100% yes but do I know when exactly it happened between month one and like month six where we are now? Like I couldn't tell you. So it's kind of a long winded answer, but I hope it answers your question because I'm trying to be as honest and transparent about my experience as possible. So now let's talk about how long it was until I could go back to work. I was told a week and some people in the comments of my last video were also told a week. So we all kind of got together and decided that a week was nowhere near long enough. And if you can afford to take two weeks off of work, I would highly recommend it. Because after a week, you still can't see without having to super zoom in. So if you're working on a computer, like I work in data analysis and marketing, so I'm constantly looking at my screen. I need to write formulas, like I need to be able to see. And it was really hard for me to do my job after a week because I was having to zoom in 
constantly to everything. So if you have any sort of job that requires attention to detail and, and needing to see smaller than like a font 12, go for the full two weeks. So you kind of have two answers there. You have the when I could go back to work, technically after a week, I could. If I had to choose when I wanted to go back to work, it probably would have been after two weeks. Now I wanna hop into dryness because this was a heavily requested question from a lot of people, not only in the comments of my YouTube video, but also in my Instagram DMs. People really wanted to know what my experience has been like six months out from Smart Surface PRK and eyeball dryness. So I did have dryness before going into the surgery. From my research, I did read that people who experienced eye dryness prior to the surgery, sometimes it got worse after the surgery. And that made me really nervous because I was already having dry eyes and getting that burning sensation and I couldn't wear my contacts for a full day because they would just start getting sticky in my eyeballs. It was really uncomfortable. But let's talk about how my dryness is now. I would say that my experience is about the same. I don't think anything changed. I, I don't think anything got better, but nothing got worse either. I don't notice it as much. I don't know if this is because I don't have my contacts in anymore. I do notice that my eyes tend to get dry in the same circumstances. If I've had a lot of screen time, if it's around like seven or eight, I don't get the burning sensation anymore. It's mostly just an overall dryness. Basically been the same but different, if that helps. I also can't remember if I mentioned at the end of my part two recovery vlog, but someone asked if my nearsightedness was restored, if my nearsightedness was restored. Yes, my vision is 100% perfect right now. Like I'm 2020, I can see, I have no complaints. I can see here, I can see here, I can see everywhere and it's phenomenal. And as of now, everything is chest kiss, perfect, would do it again in a heartbeat, no questions asked. Another thing that comes up quite a bit is the negative side effects like poor night vision or getting that haziness at night. I have a partner who is lucky enough to be born with perfect vision. So there were a couple times at night that I actually, we would describe what we were seeing to each other and we were seeing the exact same thing. So, Cause he's my, um, my test control, right? So if he's the one with the perfect vision and I'm the one with the manufactured perfect vision, if I can see what he's seeing, then I think I'm okay. I haven't had any of the negative side effects like glare, starburst, um, I think halos was one of them. So like no bad night vision, no nothing. Everything's, it's just been the exact same except I have a crystal clear vision. And the last question I had, which was how much did it cost? And I'm happy to answer this question. I think it depends on your assessment. Mine was around $3,000 Canadian in August, 2020. So I hope that helps you kind of ballpark how much it might cost for you. It's definitely not cheap and it's definitely not covered by at least my insurance. So take that information as you will. And um, I hope it helps in some way. Overall, I am really happy that I got this surgery. It was definitely worth the money because I've had glasses since the fourth grade. I am beyond happy to never have to wear glasses again, to be able to jump in the water and not have to worry about my contacts flipping out. It's the little things like waking up and just being able to see. So I told Dr. Faber when I got my first checkup, I'm gonna be so happy every morning I wake up and I'm gonna be able to see. And I'm sure he hears that all the time because he said, you know what, you're gonna forget about it. Eventually, you're gonna forget you even had glasses. And he's right, I totally forgot. After, I used to wear glasses after probably about two months. It was like, I've always been like this. Like I can't remember what it was like having glasses and I wore glasses for like 20 years. So it is really crazy that it's only been six months and it's already so far in my past. So overall, so happy that I got the surgery and I would highly recommend getting laser eye surgery to anyone who's even considering it because once you get it, it's everything you thought it would be every single day. Especially never having to wear glasses on rainy days ever, ever again. Never having to do little windshield wipers on my glasses while it's raining. I will be so happy to never have to experience that again in my life. 
Also, wearing a mask while you're wearing your glasses and having your breath fog your glasses up. I won't miss that either. And if you've stayed this far in the video, thank you for sitting down and chatting with me today. I do really appreciate all the questions that everyone left on their videos and I hope I was able to address them in this video. If you have any more questions, leave them down below as well. I'll also try to get back to you in the comment section. And before I end this video, I do have to plug my small business, Yes Dog Treats, which is made here in Vancouver. Everything is sourced in Canada and it is premium single ingredient dog treats that are perfect for training your dog. So if you want to check it out, if you have a pup that you want to spoil, I will include the link in my bio, and I'll catch you in whatever video I decide to make next. Bye!